Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans, and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist, and internationally published author, helping take your life, your business, your health, fitness, mindset, and body from where you are right now to being unstoppable. And today I'm really excited because I've got another guest with us today, Mr. Fong Chua, who is back with us for another edition. We spoke with Fong a few months ago and really keen to catch up with him and see what's going on in his world. And today we've got a really exciting topic. We're going to talk about high performance slumps and breaking the rut. But first of all, Fong, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. And I know it's evening over there and I really appreciate your time as always. It's hard to coordinate these ones. We're on opposite sides of the world. So I truly appreciate your time. It's actually, I, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun because uh, recently I've been able to speak in I think it was India and then Singapore and then now Australia. I'm like, okay, I got to get my time zones right or else I'm going to completely mess up. But it's been a lot of fun. It's yeah, good. yeah, awesome. Hey, so tell me, last time we spoke, you were in lockdown. Now, I know, you know, what's going over in India, which is just horrific with COVID at the moment. But uh, what state of the world are you living in at the moment? Are you in lockdown? You're out of lockdown? We, we just got a new emergency alert saying, lock it back down. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, and no. Going back to, to, to where we were before. So how long were you locked down for last time? Uh, last time it was like six weeks. Okay. And then after six weeks, they kind of laxed a little bit on the rules. And then they laxed a little bit more. And then now we're locked down again. So how, how long for this time? Do you know? I, I'm, I, have, I didn't really pay attention to an alert. So. <laughs> okay. So it, gets- it doesn't, doesn't really change what I'm doing. I'm still going to be at home. So. Yeah, yeah. So uh, look, I think COVID's just providing us with a nice platform to talk about some of today um, at today's topic. So tell me, what's what has COVID been like for you? How how's it feeling for you going into lockdown, out of lockdown, or like where are you feeling right now? Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but the whole COVID stuff really allowed me to break through on certain things. So for instance, one of my biggest uh, limiting beliefs was that coaching had to be face-to-face live. And my my wife was constantly telling me, you have to do Skype, you have to do Zoom, you have to do stuff online. I'm like, nah, you you don't get it. I need to be there and feel the energy and just see what they're reacting to. And then sure enough, well, with, uh, with COVID, well, we have to do stuff on Zoom. Yes. And because of that, um, as I'm sure you've experienced too, you started a podcast, uh, same as myself. Like It then allowed you to connect with so many different people from all over the world. Yes. And that would be something I wouldn't even think of doing if we were not in lockdown, if we did not have to be on Zoom or Skype or anything like that. So for myself, it's it, there's a lot of benefits to it. Not yeah. saying that I enjoy this completely because I would love to go outside. I would like to yeah. do the one-on-one stuff, but uh, I found a, a, a silver lining in there, which is allowing myself to really connect with people I never thought of connecting to. And then a another bonus for myself was uh, back in February 2020 when in Canada COVID was just kind of getting there before people were sent home and before all that kind of stuff was the birth of my my first child. Yeah. So. Right. I was able to really be at home and and help take care of the kid and uh, watch her grow without having to be away from her. So it kind of worked out twofold for me. Yeah, um, yeah, I, but again, I love, but like, love it. We, we did sacrifice. Uh, we did sacrifice what was uh, uh, Christmas and we did sacrifice uh, New Year's and all that kind of stuff without being with family and friends, which is kind of sad. Uh, but all in all, uh, it's been it's been good. And this is what I love about. Uh, you and success because it really doesn't matter what comes your way you're going to come out on top and I think if hopefully uh, like we don't live through something else like this because I mean this has been obviously really um, horrible um, you know globally on people's health and and so forth but I think it's been a really great example of resilience and how no matter what is in front of you, you can find a way to, to deal with it. And mm-hmm. I think we probably touched on this last time we spoke, but I think uh, like my business hasn't taken off as much or grown as much 
um, in any other environment and COVID has provided so many opportunities, exactly like what you said, I would never contemplate doing things on, on Zoom and other people wouldn't have probably bought either. Uh, but COVID has forced us into this situation and I think it's been a really great, great experience with a number of different opportunities if you want to find it. And so I love, I love the fact that you've, you know, you've looked for that and found and, it. And I think the good thing about it is once everything does open up, once everything goes back to that new normal, then now we have another tool in our arsenal that we can always go back to. We can always know yeah. that we can rely on that other aspect of things if we have to change things around. So it allows us to really expand our mindset and expand the possibilities. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these things where people grow and people are challenged and that people are able to find new ways, it's when they're facing that adversity. It's when they're facing those challenges that really allows them to be more creative, allows them to think outside of box, to go reach out to find other people's advice or bounce ideas off of each other to allow them to go, okay, how do we make this work? How do we make something that's completely awful, completely like, it sucks, but how do we make this work for us? Yes. So it's been, it's been good. Yeah, really well said. So tell me, I don't know whether you've experienced this experienced this since COVID or whether we have to talk about a, you know, a previous time, but um, have you found yourself in a bit of a slump? Because obviously you're always focused on success, but have you found yourself, man, I'm just over this. I'm just, I feel like I'm plateauing on a downward slope. Uh, to be very honest, during this period of time, I haven't felt that way at all. Uh, other, mm -hmm. other than missing the outdoors <laughs> and, <laughs> and missing uh, like family, missing friends, missing uh, that contact and, and that relationship building and events. Other than that, I haven't felt like a rut of, uh, of not being able to produce or being productive. Um, in fact, I've been forcing myself with so much stuff, so many pro uh, projects and so many ventures that I haven't had a chance to really stop and go, wow, I'm bored kind of yes. thing, right? Yes. So it's just one thing after another. Um, I've been constantly reaching out to be on different people's uh, summits and getting speaking engagements and finding new clients and building more relationships that my days are really packed and I haven't had that chance to really feel any downturn on, yes. on my side at least yeah yeah good on you well i'll um we might have to talk um uh, perhaps theoretically or maybe a past experience for you in a moment but um maybe some people can relate to to this i'll tell you what i've gone through because i have found myself go through a bit of a slump and slowly coming out of it now but um like through covid uh, same thing i was i was really focused so uh, to put you in the picture so what's happened here so we were locked down for about eight months and then we opened up again before Christmas. So we were able to have a not relatively normal Christmas. Uh, and we've continued to be open. And we shut down for another five days, just a brief one. And then we've been open since. So we're pretty much, you know, back to normal, pretty much. And what happened for me? So during COVID, same thing. I was like, go, go, go. I was so focused every day, achieve all these things. And it almost got, we got to the stage where we were open again. And I was ready for a break because I had worked myself into the, the ground. Now we opened up and my uh, number of clients wanting to see me just exploded, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, more clients than I've ever had before. And I went from having some freedom to do the things that I wanted to do growing the business to now I'm working um, an average of probably 14 hours a day. And just back to back, I had 15, 16 coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'd got to the stage where I was feeling burnt out. I was feeling like, man, I needed a rest before. And now I'm in the thick of it in a good mm -hmm. way. But I feel really bored. I'm not bored. I don't know why I said bored. Burnt out. And I feel like now I had sort of plateaued and kind of I, I didn't want to work anymore. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm so busy when I do have some spare time. It's like, nah, I need to rest. So I'm slowly getting out of that. But I was wondering if you've got some strategies or if you found yourself in that in the past and how do you, you know, if you're in a rut, if you find you, you know, you want to keep going, but you, you're just stuck here, 
what are some strategies is it that you use or have used in the past to help? Well, I, I always find time to unwind a little bit. Uh, I'm I'm a sucker for for comedy. So okay. every every moment I can, and when I have some downtime, I would love to watch something that really makes me laugh, makes me relax. Let, let's give me a chance to really not think about anything. However, having said that, it's kind of difficult to not think because um, yeah. for for a person like myself, I like learning from anything I watch. So even though if it's comedy, even though like I love watching impromptu uh, sketches and impromptu, I, I don't know if you guys have whose line is it any, anyways on in Australia. Uh, we've used we used to have that, yeah. Yeah, so I, I love that show and uh, it's a good 20, 30 minute show where it allows me to really just unwind and laugh. But at the same time, I would sit there and go, that's interesting. I'm gonna see if I can apply that to my podcast or, oh, yeah. that's neat. How do I apply that to my speech? So. Um, I love watching stuff that makes me laugh. Like, like I said, it really lets my, let my brain relax and just, uh, and just not think about anything. And then I usually just fall asleep <laughs> watching a show or something like that. So uh, it's been, it's been good. And then also uh, giving your t- yourself that chance to refresh yourself as a f- fellow fitness person. I love just going outside for a run. Yeah. And when I go outside for a run, it really recharges myself, really uh, revitalizes my, my brain. And then once I come back, I take my shower and I go, okay, I'm good to go again. Yeah. And, yeah. and then the third thing is talking to other people. Mm-hmm. So for instance, I know that if I talk to somebody else who has energy, who has drive, I know they're going to be able to pull that out of me. Because yeah. yeah. initially, even though if I was down in a slump, I know that I can't let that other person down because I know they are going to be high energy. So that whether I'm faking it or if I have to force it out of myself, I'm going to have to force that energy to match that other person. Yes. But by the end of, by, by midpoint, it becomes natural again. And by the end of that talk, I'm geared to go again. Yes. So I, 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 that's what I would do. Like when I find myself stuck, I do one of the three things. Uh, yeah. drown myself in comedy, uh, drown myself in fitness, or drown myself with somebody else's energy so that I could pull myself back out there. Yeah, yeah, that, that's really cool. Um, yeah, I, I'm similar. Yeah, I love a good comedy too. Um, I also like an action movie. I like to see lots of people being shot up. For some reason, that does something to me. But yes, John, Rick, Wick. John Wick's the way to go. <laughs> you can't underestimate the, the power of rest. But you're right. It's also uh, what you said about surrounding yourself with, you know, that person's got a lot of energy. It works the other way too. If you're in an environment where, uh, you know, the energy is being sucked out of you or that per- you, I'm sure you can think of a, a person in your, or your life or current or past where you're just in a room. It's like, Oh my God, this person is just sucking the life right out of me. This is so much hard work as opposed to, uh, you know, being around someone else. I saw the, um, I don't know whether you just put it up yesterday, um the the show about russell peters um comedian russell peters yeah. and uh yeah the the impact of comedy and and everything is uh, it's just really powerful so yeah really nice points um maybe i need to watch a good comedy uh tonight like stand up <laughs> is great because it really like indirectly you also watch how to perform too right? yes and when you watch them perform, you start thinking, well, I should par- start telling jokes in my presentation or yeah. I should start giving a punchline here. And then so you're also learning, but you're also just having fun doing it. So stand yeah. up is great. Yeah, it's a good point. And you mentioned before about in COVID and starting a, you know, a podcast show. And I mean, I started this one um, during um, COVID as well. And I was just having a conversation with my daughter yesterday, who's 13, and she's got some... Um, you know, some social anxiety, you know, just having conversations and stuff. I said, it was exactly like me. I said, I used to hate speaking to people. Um, but I said, one of the things, it took me 30 years to work it out. But um, I said, one of the things that I said that I needed to do to get out of that is I needed to speak more. So yes. I created the pod, uh, this one and my, my Rob Evans 365 one. I've done like, what, 1500 episodes now. I know, you're, you're, you're after, a beast. <laughs> after, after that many times, you get used to just having a conversation right. uh, with people. Um, so yeah, really nicely done. Um, what's, so- interesting, what's interesting was that 
um, throughout my, my podcast, I've been asking a lot of business uh, entrepreneurs and very energetic, very well-spoken individuals the question of, have you always been a great speaker? Have you always been this energetic person and this extrovert that we all see? And more likely not, most of them would tell me that, no, I used to be that shy person in the back of the room. Or yeah. no, I worked really hard to become this. So for a lot of my clients, when they come up to me, they was like, but that's not what I do. I'm too shy. I'm an introvert. I'm like, that's what we all were. Yes. All your idols, all the people that you watch that are exciting and energetic, they all started off like you. Yes. All you have to do is put yourself out there and start doing it over and over again. And eventually you become the next person that somebody asks, have you always been like this? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Because people see you and they say, oh, wow, they must have always been like that. And I remember like people talk to me and say, oh, you're so energetic. You're so passionate. I say, yeah, but do you know what? There was a f about six years ago, I was not happy with myself. And I thought, oh, why? I have all this energy inside and I feel so passionate about what I do. But if somebody asked me, say, yeah, I'm passionate, Tom. Yeah, I love what I do. Like, yeah, it's great. But it's like, why don't I express it differently? And it was a lot, almost like I was embarrassed to show enthusiasm. So for about 12 months or more, I worked on it every single day. I was walking around the neighborhood, you know, speaking out loud these incantations about how passionate I was. And every now and then somebody would walk past and I'd think, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm never going to see him again. Um, but you, ha you have to work at it. You really do. So I was, I was asked to be on this panel to help a bunch of cadets on their interviews. Right? Oh, yeah and just give them feedback and whatnot. And then one after another, they answer the questions all exactly the same to the point where I started questioning, are we not allowed to have emotions yes. when we're answering these questions? Because I don't feel it at all. Um, I had, there was this one question that says, uh, what do you most, what do you enjoy most about cadets? And that person goes, well, the most exciting part about cadets is the flight simulation. We went up, down, sideways loop de loops it was very very fun i lean for him like really because i don't think so yeah <laughs> so you have to bring me into that experience so that i'm excited yeah. if you're not excited telling me about it yeah. then why do i even care about it yeah so you gotta bring that out yeah you do you do so i'm curious with um i want you to grab your crystal ball <laughs> and what does the next 12 months look like for you in terms of um, you know what your plans are in terms of perhaps predicting what you think the outlook for globally is going to be your region etc we you, you know whether you're going to be traveling around doing things speaking on stages all that kind of stuff well i'm not very good at predicting what's going to happen i can i can tell you what i hope is going to happen and that is, I, I hope to be, tra uh, be, be traveling by, by October, November, because uh, there's right. a couple of events that I'm hoping is gonna, gonna happen. Yeah. And yeah. I would love to be there and I would love to be speaking on those stages. So I'm, I have my fingers crossed that that's gonna happen. And as long as things are progressing the way they are right now, there's a good chance of that happening. Uh, we have a, a trip planned for our 10th anniversary and that uh, yeah. trip is planned for for January, so I'm really hoping I could go on that trip. So, yeah, was that like something lot. to do with Disneyland this this time? Yeah, it's going to be a Disney cruise, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited about that. So, if I was to 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 uh, predict, I predict that everything's going to go according to plan, and that we can all fulfill these these plans that we have uh, from a business perspective and from a real estate perspective. I have a personal goal to help uh, 30 plus people get their books out within 2021. And right okay. now I'm at 10 and I have from now to the end of the year to get 20 people more to get their books out. Um, I actually have five more people getting their books launched in the next two months here. So uh, I'm very excited about that. And that's another thing that, that keeps my drive going and keeps my motivation going is living that experience with my clients yeah. when they achieve successes that they've never dreamed of. 
Yeah. And that fuels me to want to do more for other people. So uh, that's one of the, the stuff that I'm working on. And to do that, I'm speaking on a lot of virtual stages, a lot of other summits and a lot of uh, podcasts and working with a lot of different partners and collaborators to, to complement their packages, their offers, where I can help their clients write their books as well. So from a business perspective, I, I, I'm gearing to go. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Uh, real estate wise, I find that at least in my hometown, uh, there's a lot of demand right now. Um, yeah. But there's not that well. There's lots of demand, and the prices right now are relatively low uh, because mm-hmm. there's that that correction of nothing was sold in the last like six months to a year because nobody want to go look at houses. Yeah. So then, because of that, the sellers have adjusted all their prices lower than what they wanted to uh, price them at before, and the buyers have more of a negotiation uh, standpoint where they could still get a good deal, even if they're paying a little bit more than asking price. So uh, from a real estate perspective, I'm going to see that there's going to be a lot more good deals coming out in the next few months, either it's real estate or business-wise, office buildings, uh, strip malls and all kinds of stuff, great potential there to maybe convert them into different stuff. It may not be a retail, it may be something else. So there's lots of opportunities out there and there's going to be a lot more coming up especially now where I'm at, there's another wave of shutting things down, which would only move that even further out. So there's going to be more deals coming up. Yeah, nice. Well done. You're on fire there. And the baby sounds like they're on fire in the background. Uh, That's a, um, I hope that's not coffee. That's a serious cup of coffee if it is. It's just water right now. (laughs) Uh, So tell me, I'm just curious uh, because you do, and I don't know whether I mentioned at the top of the show, but um, I mean, you're a coach, you're a speaker, you're an author, you work with real estate as well. How do you balance your like your energy or shift your energy from one to the other and your mindset as well? Because they're quite diverse, like from books to selling real estate and to coaching people. I mean, you can be coaching people in each of those areas, but how do you manage that personally? I find that it allows me to balance my, my personality and also allows me to balance my, my mind as well. Uh, as I kind of alluded before, I used to be that really shy person in the background and not wanting to talk to anybody and like that and, all, and whatnot. So when it comes to dealing with the real estate stuff, analyzing deals and book writing and getting that all set up for myself, that's really just me focused on what I do and being that introvert that I used to be. So I could focus yeah. on that. Uh, But then when it comes to the coaching side, then I bring out that more extroverted, more energetic person uh, when I'm coaching people and also when I'm doing calls and when I'm doing speaking and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of mix that in throughout the day so that I have a good balance of both types of energy for myself and it keeps me active, keeps me focused. Um, But during most of the day, I'm building relationships. And yeah. then after the majority of the day that I spend most of the time with my family, with, with my child and whatnot. And then uh, before I start my day, I do my exercises and my mind feeding. So yeah. really it kind of, uh, you kind of time block what you want to do first. And then you time block your, your priorities. And then for myself, I like balancing that energy uh, from introvert to extrovert kind of mindset and then spacing that out. So that's that's what I do. It works for me. Yeah, yeah, nice. And I think if somebody's listening to this episode for the first time and they're wanting to build this success, I think what you're laying down here are some really good cues for success does leave clues. And you've, uh, or both of us have come from being introverted, practice a lot, put in things, place so that we can become a better version of ourselves to build the success we want. And then, as you just said there, every day you're doing some mind feeding. You've worked out what works for you and what may work for you may not work for someone else, but you've got to do the mind feeding. You've got to, you said about building relationships. I mean, you wouldn't be as successful as you are if you didn't take that time to build those relationships and connect with people because that's when the opportunities come up. I mean, we're only talking now because of an, um, you know, we both took an opportunity to to go to an event, you meet at an event, you then connect after the event. And, you know, now we've had a, a couple of chats. So um, 
I think, uh, you know, you're a really great example of inspiration of, you know, what's possible uh, for you, even if, you know, you don't know what it is that you want to do at some point in your life, you've, you've carved out this really good niche. And I mean, music's a big part of your life too, isn't it? Yep. Uh, I used to, I used to do a lot of singing. I used to do a lot of uh, competitions when it comes to performing and whatnot. And I, I tend to sometimes jump back to that mindset of, okay, what do I need to do to prepare for a performance? That's the same thing as I would do when I prepare for a speech or a presentation. Yeah. And then how do I get audience engagement when I'm performing? Well, same thing I need to do here. So uh, it's one of those things that I, I'm, very, I'm very fortunate to have, have journeyed through that kind of stuff before having a little bit of uh, performance background so that I'm able to apply that to this stuff here. And uh, it, it lets me balance out a lot of different skill sets, which is something I really enjoy. I think also you're a really great example of the fact that you don't have to say, okay, well, which one do I pick? Okay, <laughs> I should just focus on real estate. Oh no, I should just focus on books. Oh, I should just focus on music. And you're, you've got a really nice way of uh, you know, juggling it all to satisfy the the parts of you and really fulfill you because they they're completely different parts of your brain aren't they like to sing and to play music engages a different part to um say in investing in real estate but you've also found that art of picking out those things yes just like preparing to go on stage and for a performance uh, you need to be able to do the same things for uh you know speaking yeah. and i think if uh, you know, yeah, and I find that being able to touch on a little, a little bit of everything, you, you don't have to be an expert in all that other stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not performing anymore <laughs> because I have a lot of friends who I go, okay, that's your stuff. I'll let you perform and I'll, I'll just do this side of things or I'll just yeah. be that person who does the smaller role and whatnot. But, um, but being involved in those situations, in that environment, at least you get to understand what that world's like. Yes. Then when you're networking with other people who's also interested in that, then you could kind of pick out certain aspects of that world and this world and another world so that you could connect with more and more people with different interests, which is something I, I love doing because now I'm able to really build relationships with so many different types of people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really well done. And I mean, if you ever get the opportunity to, uh, you know, listen to Fong live, then you should. And uh, there's a lot of energy, but you can feel it through this uh, this interview as well. I mean, you always bring a lot of energy. So um, on that note, Fong, if people want to get in touch with you, do you want to just um, give a shout out to a, a few of the ways that people can do that? Yeah, sure. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, I think I'm the only Fong Chua on Facebook, F-O-N-G-C-H-U-A. And then if, if not, once you find that name, you'll see my face everywhere. So uh, it's for sure going to be me. And then I have a YouTube channel is uh, your area TV. So you can find me on there. Uh, and then also you can email me at fong.twa at your area.ca. And your podcast show. Uh, yeah, you can, you can see the videos on, on my YouTube channel. Uh, the audios are on Spotify and it's called the P potential success show, which yeah. is right there. <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, it's a great show too. Um, Fong, I want to thank you so much. I always love the energy that you bring to these interviews and the insights and you're, you're a true inspiration. Um, really admire everything that you do. And uh, yeah, just thanks so much for your time today. Oh, thank you for, for having me for, uh, on, a, on for a second time. And like I said before, what you're doing is absolutely incredible for you to hit 1500 episodes <laughs> is uh, I, for, for me to get there on my podcast, that's, that's years from now. So uh, that's a great feat on your side. So congratulations on all the success that you've been doing and all the people that you've been impacting as well on your show. And it's a great show. I love watching it. I love listening to it. And what you're doing is absolutely inspiration as well. So thank you very much. Truly appreciate it. Thanks so much. Speak to you next time. Yeah, we'll do. We'll see you.